So what's up YouTube, hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back again with a new video. Today we're going to be checking out um, Ben Shapiro's Smacks Down Back Lives Matter. Okay, it has nothing to do with race. Let's check this video out and see how it goes. You ready? Let's watch it together. Number of things that I wanted to share with you. According to Pew Research, the net worth of white families in 2013 was 141,000. For black families, it was 11,000 even less than the 19,000 it was in 2007. According to economist Edward Wolf of the University of New York, excluding vehicles and other durables, the median black family worth is just $1,700, while 40% of black families have zero or negative wealth. White family worth, in terms of uh, financial worth, is 69 times more than that of black families. Given this disparity, how can you argue that racism is not a driving factor in income inequality? Because it has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. And when you have a culture that doesn't... And when... And when it, you know what? Explain to me. You explain to me why black kids aren't graduating high school. Explain that one to me. Explain to me why black kids are shooting each other in rates significantly higher than whites are shooting each other. Explain to me why 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the murder. Explain to me why the, why the number of blacks and black kids in prison, not for innocent reasons, not for walking down the street and getting pulled into a prison, is so high. Explain If it has nothing to do with culture, explain... So I feel like it should not be a, it should not be a discussion of laughter. She shouldn't be laughed. That was just a special in my own opinion. She should not be laughing. Also, the other black man, they should not be laughing. And also the congregation. I know it's a Black Lives Matter um, conference, but it's not a matter of laughter. This is a serious discussion. It has to do with culture. Exactly what Ben Shapiro is saying, it has to do with culture. And it's very serious for us to put our mind to it and tackle what's at front. Explain to me why the single motherhood rate in the black community jumped from 20% to 70% in the same course of time that the civil rights movement has made such tremendous strides. Is America more racist now than it was in 1960? And if it is, please explain to me how that happened. So what do I think those riots are? I think the depravity, I think they're thugs. And I think if you really want to make a difference, Thurgood Marshall, who grew up just two blocks from there, did such a thing, who was a contemporary of Martin Luther King. And now I'd like to skip over to Dr. Seacrest. I, I look at the Baltimore uprisings as more than just riots, right? I hate the idea when you say thugs and riots, right? White people riot as well. When y'all win Super Bowls two years in a row, y'all get off the hook. Don't make it seem like it's just Baltimore getting upset. So my 32nd answer is I feel the frustration of what's happening in the community and I think it's a symptom. The, the uprisings are a symptom of a pressure that's been unaddressed for too long. I'm, I'm offended by the language of uprising applied to people who are breaking into other black people's stores and looting them. Uh, this is not. This is a lack of values, and people who people who are destroying private property, destroying cop cars, in an uprising against what exactly? Against the black police chief, against a mostly minority police force, against the black mayor, against the black president, against the black attorney general, against the entirely uh, against a, a city council that that is nine of fifteen are black, and all fifteen are elected Democrats. Uh, what is the uprising against? What is it seeking to achieve? I still don't see what exactly the the, the riots are seeking to achieve. Bottom line is, uh, this is all. It, it all could be boiled down to just act like a mensch. Act like a human being. Honestly, it's, it's, not a useful, it's not useful to riot. It's not useful to break things. It's not useful to throw rocks at people. And the idea that we're supposed to sort of correlate let's, let's your level of outrage. Let's hold off on the idea. I'm going to stick to the 30 seconds on yeah, this the last one. Sentence, Charles, the, the last okay, sentence. Yeah. The, the idea that we're supposed to correlate your level of outrage with a certain level of justification. In other words, the more outraged you are and the more angry you are, the more justified you must be is absolute nonsense. Huh. Mm. Oh. Then, um, since the issue of disparity is, has come up a number of times, when does disparity not indicate racism? Level of effort. St statistical disparity. You know, for example, overwhelmingly men commit crimes more than women, but we don't say that the Justice Department is, is sexist. So, uh, is there uh, is there a line that you draw for yourself, or is there some some way that you interpret statistical disparity and you determine that that is not a racial disparity; it's something else. Well, we can return yeah. to it. That's okay, too. Ben, do you want to? Yes. Play it's, it's called evidence of racism. 
When there is no evidence of racism, it's probably not racism. When there is actual evidence of racism, it's probably racism. And the fact that everybody jumps from there's inequality and therefore there is inequity, just because there's inequality does not mean there was inequity. But there has to be racism. You can't be, you can't say there's no racism. Without I mean, evidence? I mean, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that uh, I don't know which animal. Uh, maybe you, you, you maybe we're talking about, about dogs racist. or something. I'm, I'm talking about human beings. And I'm like, m human beings are most likely going to have racial prejudices. I'm just so sorry. I, I, I'm just so sorry. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't come, I'm a, I don't come, yeah, I, I come, no, I come from, I come from planet Charles, Earth. Charles, I just, I want to ask you a question. So your default, your default is that when there is no evidence, racism is the deciding factor. That is no, 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 I was not saying that. I'm just saying that, uh, that you're going to have sexist, you're going to have racist, you're going to have all this stuff. I mean, I'm just saying that... I agree it exists, but the problem that I'm seeing, and, and this is the problem with the general conversation, is that there's no solution in simply saying there's racism out there. How does that solve anything? I mean, when, when you talk about there's institutional racism, what does that mean? Show me a law that is racist in intent, and we will agree. Show me a police officer who commits a racist act like we saw in South Carolina, right, where a police officer shot a black man running away and it was obviously unjustified, and I will agree. But you, the, the, the idea that you can craft a narrative based on no racism because it just must be somewhere out there in the ether, that doesn't solve problems for anybody and creates more problems for people. Thank you. Because now they grow up in a Thank milieu you. and an environment where they are told that every obstacle they face is from some shadowy, nameless, faceless group Racist. who's out to get them simply because of the color of their skin. They'll never succeed in that environment. That's true. I got Ben Shapiro's point of view. Will she not put that scenario every time that whatever that has been done to us is racist? It's not everything that has been done to you that is racist. Because that narrative will keep on going around black communities, around black people, that whatever a white person do to you is racist. And that should be really, really talked about and changed. You know, the, the weirdest thing is that actually in the, in the black home, I mean, as I experienced it, really, um, there is no discussion of, of racism. A racism actually is a discussion that you actually come out and you face in, in the public because it's, it's a real thing that you have to actually expect. I mean, if, you, if you, you're silly and you're foolish if you don't, if you don't really think that that's going to be there and encountered in the real world. I'm sorry, this is just a fact of life. But if I'm at home and having dinner uh, with my father or whatever, we don't go, oh my God, this society is so racist as I'm eating my steak and you know what I mean? Uh, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, I can't bear it. My black skin's causing... I mean, no, we don't, we don't talk like that. Stuff. Actually, we don't talk like that. We talk about, my God, aunt, what's her name? Oh my God, she's got to take some pills because she's off the register. I mean, I mean it's just like, this is, these are the conversations we have at home. We don't have these kinds of conversations that we're having right now. At least in my childhood, we didn't have them. And I'm watching the people I knew growing up in the black neighborhood. I didn't hear anybody really talking about race when we were at the dinner table. I mean, it just didn't really pop up unless it was an issue it was on television. But mostly it was about family and, and regular life. But I disagree. I have to tell you, even in my culture, there is an underlying racism. And I know that the panel today, and especially with what's going on in America, we're talking about white on black. But you cannot, I cannot wake up in the morning and not think about, you know, intercultural racism, okay? I'm not Mexican enough. Why? Because I'm articulate and because I have straight hair and I can wear high heels. I don't have a tattoo on my neck. Yes, there is a huge problem with racism no matter if you're light-skinned or dark-skinned. Absolutely, there is intercultural racism. It's absolutely underlying. And while you may not talk about it, your grandmother will have the favorite grandkid if she's the lightest one with the good hair that becomes the favorite grandkid in our culture. And that's, you know, unfortunately, even within our own cultures, we tend to look upon, you know, the color of each other's skin and how much education we have. And if my uncle has done time in jail, which, you know, he has, then he becomes more Mexican than I am. What is up with that? I mean, it's sad, but it's true. It's absolutely true. It's like, I can't eat spicy picante true. sauce, so I'm not Mexican enough. You know, it, it's true, you know, in every culture, whether it's Asian, you know, black, Mexican, there is, while you may not have grown up talking about it over your, you know, uh, uh, tea and toast. I mean, in my family, there. if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, you're not Jewish. You're not enough. Jewish enough. <laughs> it's true. That part is true. This entire time, I've been trying to think about your initial question about disparities, are they automatically tied to race? And at first, I think all of us were stumped because we were trying to think of the instances. I, I do agree that they are separate. 
but they don't necessarily correlate within itself. There are disparities. NAACP, we are the experts inside of the nation of bringing in the racial lens for all of the work. No, they're not necessarily going hand in hand, or they're not necessarily tied to each other. Um, so that was that's how I would answer it. No, they don't have to go together. My job as a civil rights attorney is to be able to f make you see race at every given opportunity, but no, it's not present in each and every single disparity. To your second What are the standards? What are the standards of the difference? I mean, you said that you want people to see race in every single issue. Where so it's what are the present. Where, where, where it's, it's present. Okay, so, so for instance, what, if we're what's talking... What's your standard as to where it's present? Absolutely. What's my... Um, for the... Take something as simple as a... Um, if we're talking about a disparity, say men and women. Um, my job would be to show what does that look like when you have women from um, a different group, uh, communities of color. What does it look like when we're talking about a woman who's working or stuck in a minimum wage job, not be, not as a starter, but for her career? Right, no, I guess the, the question that I'm asking like? more and specifically. So we bring in the racial dynamic of right. how that affects. No, I understand that. The question that I'm asking is, when do you decide something racist has occurred? Mm. Racist? Yes. What's the... when, 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 do you have you, when can you decide that an act of racism has occurred? Because if you have just a statistical disparity, has, a, has an act of racism automatically occurred? That was David's basic question, I think. Right. There's, a, there's a, obviously a, a, there might be a, um, there will be a, a disparate impact on uh, different groups of people. That doesn't necessarily mean, I think what you're saying is, doesn't necessarily mean something racist is going on, even though there's a racial impact. So uh, the question was about where do you draw the line between something that might have a racial impact but is not inherently racist? Yeah. Um, let me move on. And okay. Because whenever people draw the line about racism, for me, I feel like whenever you should draw the line about racism, of course, when a black person has been treated poorly because of his color, of his color skin, I hate him much. Um, the place he is, let me say, a black person that comes to look for a job and he's been discriminated because he's black, he can't be given a job that's racist. You know, so that's when you, you draw the line that racist is occurring. But when a black person is already working in, the, in an organization and has been given work to do, a heavy load of work to do, because that is how every single person right there is, is working, but choose to say because he or she is the only person that's black in an organization that is giving more work to do because he's black. That itself should not be considered as racism because you are facing the same challenges everyone in their scenario is facing. It's not because of your skin color that you are being chosen to work more. Every single person in the organization is working as hard as you. It's not because of your skin color. You should not take it because you are the only black person there, that everyone is um, treating you badly, that, you are, that they are all racist. That's why I always draw the line. Okay, the aspect of racism itself is it was, I love how it was being discussed right here. I love how it's been tackled with bright head and they all came to a conclusion uh, I love Ben Shapiro's point of view I love the black woman as well her point of view the black man and also the white the Mexican lady I love that all of them their points of view because this is a discussion that ought to be talked about more where we should draw the line that this has been this this art is an this art is an art of racist and this art is not an art of racist irrespective of this skin color it was done because of this. It was done because of that. It's not an art of racism. I love how this discussion and it's really, really meaningful and something we should talk about more often in America. So comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video as many as you can. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't know papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all